All right, we're back to problem number six, and I like this one a lot. Again, I'm forcing you to draw these particular solutions in order to kind of analyze them correctly and not to go astray. So let's try number six. It says, suppose demand is perfectly inelastic and the supply of the good in question decreases as a result. So, again, it says, suppose demand is perfectly inelastic. Now, is that a realistic situation? Well, it's an extreme, of course. And in the short run, some things are highly inelastic. Perfectly inelastic? No. But we use this because it bounds us. It shows us at the extreme what's likely to happen, right? So here's the demand curve. We'll call this D0. Here's quantity. Here's price. This is a perfectly inelastic demand curve. Let's write it down. Perfectly inelastic demand curve. All right? And now they're saying to you, if that's the case, and the supply of the good in question decreases. So let's draw a supply. It doesn't really matter how elastic or inelastic I make it in this particular case. Here's S0. All right? So this is our equilibrium prior to this change in supply. Here's the price. Here's the quantity. All right? And now they say supply decreases. Well, we know if supply decreases, it's a shift backwards in the supply curve. I use a different color just to kind of give us some variety here. The supply curve decreases. So now here's your, you go from S0 to S1. So what's happened? Well, analyze it. You've got a perfectly inelastic demand curve. The price is going to go right to here, to P1. And quantity 1 is going to be right there, right below quantity naught. In other words, there's going to be no change in quantity demand. And under the extreme situation, that demand is perfectly inelastic. And all that happens when price is going to, excuse me, when supply shifts back is that price is going to rise. And there's going to be no change in quantity demanded. What kind of good is this? I don't know. Cigarettes in the very short run. If I raise the price of cigarettes to $10 to, you know, to this moment, you had to run out and buy cigarettes, you'd probably pay that price. Okay? So let's say there are some goods that are really inelastic, maybe not perfectly so, but again, it's a good example. Let's run through our answers here. It says the equilibrium quantity decreases and equilibrium price is unchanged. Well, because you've drawn this, you know that's crazy, right? Equilibrium quantity has not changed, all right? It is frozen right there, and equilibrium price is unchanged. That's also wrong. So we can throw A out rather quickly. B, the equilibrium price increases and equilibrium quantity is unchanged. Equilibrium price increases, equilibrium quantity is unchanged. It's going to be our answer, folks, but let's just go on further. C, the equilibrium quantity and the equilibrium price both unchanged. No, this was the original equilibrium. This is the new one. We clearly experienced an increase in price, so that is wrong. And the last one is D, buyer's total expenditures on the good is unchanged. Buyer's total expenditures on the good is unchanged. This I like. I don't like the answer. I just like it as an example. All right? This says what? That the buyer's expenditures would be this area. That's the price they pay times how many of the buyers purchased. That is before the shift back in supply. We got the shift back in supply, price rises, and now the expenditures of this larger rectangle, because this is the price paid by consumers, and quantity demand hasn't changed. So the expenditures by consumers rise, all right? They're not unchanged. So D is wrong, but, but it's a nice way to kind of see it and look at the impact on total revenue here. All right, that's number six. We can stop at number six and move on to number seven.